welcome to the first episode of Asylum, a new podcast from Habibi Works. In this series, you'll hear directly from those seeking asylum in Europe. Today, we meet a woman who dared to step into the unknown, fleeing Afghanistan for an uncertain future in Europe. For this series, she goes by the name Zarina to keep her identity anonymous. Zarina is a young gynaecologist who studied in Kabul. Zarina and her husband stayed in Afghanistan longer than most of her family, many of whom successfully claimed asylum in Sweden. Zarina and her husband wanted to join them legally. Over the next four episodes, you'll hear Zarina tell her story, recalling a journey of struggle and of hope. To begin, she takes us back to her life in Afghanistan. For a glossary of terms used in this episode, please read the description. The situation in Afghanistan is from the half century that is moving with the same path. There isn't any changes in this country. At that time, the terrorist group that is named by Taliban, that now they are leading the country illegally, they were... Um, killing people, innocent people, and also now that they took the country in their, in their hand, the same thing is going on. They are taking each decision against the female gender. They are so much against of women to heal themselves in that country. I was only the person that left in that country for my family. The rest they left in Sweden. I was only one that I left in that country, so it was much difficult for me to face that all the situation. I accept that I have to leave my education and I have to go out of this country. And now that I have so many follow-ups that they are arresting uh, women, that they are fighting for their rights, they are keeping them in a prison without any criminal records. It is so difficult. Now they have somehow eliminated the ladies or females from the society totally. They just made a limit for them to be at home, to give birth to the child. The only thing that you can do is to do the tailoring. Then that's it. You don't have right to go to gain education. Now that they have closed girls' school, people also are against of their decisions, but they cannot do anything. They protest, they forcibly open the schools, but again the Taliban just took action against it. And somehow the people in Afghanistan, they are living a threatened life there. And I'm afraid that we will not going to have any internet access in that country. So at that time, what will going to happen? Nobody knows. There are so many cases of rape in Afghanistan, and there are so many kidnaps, so many killings, selective killings. There isn't any rule. I'm confused that our TikTokers who are living in that country, they are being arrested by the terrorists. But why the other countries, TikTokers or the YouTubers, they are coming to our country as a tourist and they are just announcing that this country is safe, the Taliban are very, very well behaved. I, I'm totally confused with this double standard. What is going on in this country? I'm also afraid <laughs> that what will going to happen with, to us. As a professional woman with a university degree, Zarina's life changed drastically under Taliban rule. Amid selective killings and a rapid erasure of women's rights, she decided to leave Afghanistan. She fled, leaving behind a city she once knew and loved. Serena picks up her story as she arrives in Greece. From the beginning, I just crossed the border from the land, not from the sea. Then in one day, we just drove from Orustiada uh, till Ikomanija. And in Ecumenija, we were being in prison for uh, two months and four days because we didn't have any legal paper from Greece. 
but there was so many questions in my mind just moving around at that time. There were so many from other nations like Syrian, Somalian. They were also in the same point like I was at that time. But they were being released in one uh, week. But I don't know why I remain in a prison, like a prison it was, in for two months and four days. And I have spoken about this in asylum service in Panama also at that time, when I get released on 14th of February 2019. They investigated from us. They took the documents, my legal documents also, and the, the one that we made. Then they put us in, uh, it was a prison type of place. And I have asked so many times from them what is going on, if you tell us about the process. And they told us that we were going to help you financially to return back to your country. I think they said about 500 euros. And uh, I didn't accept that at that time. I refused that. I just answered them that if I wanted to go back to my country, why I have to invest about 10,000 euros to reach to my destination? And they said, it's up to you if you want to make a decision. And I said, uh, I don't want to leave. Then they said that we were going to release you if you want to go to Athens to apply for asylum. Because I asked from them that I want to apply asylum here. Someone told me in the prison that if you want to apply for asylum, they will, they will help you. Then I don't want to go back to Athens to start the procedure from the beginning again to be in a prison. I don't know for how long because I was totally new person in this country at that time. And I said that I have passed my one month here. Again, I will uh, wait here until you are going to ask for me an asylum in Greece. And they accepted that, but they said that we don't know when you were going to be released. I said, no matter, I will wait here, but I will not go to Athens. Thank you for listening to Asylum. Join us again for the next episode in which Zarina will share her experiences of detention in Greece. We hope to see you then.